as is this marijuana one step closer to becoming legal in New York, which will have an impact on policing. This as the NYPD is grappling with an increase in violent attacks against Asians, sweeping reform measures approved by the city council last week. Every other week, we'll have a one on one conversation with Police Commissioner Dermot Shea. And once again, he joins us live this morning to address how the department is handling these issues. Good morning to you, Commissioner. How you doing? Good morning, Dan. Doing great. There is a lot to talk about, Commissioner, so let's get right into it and start with the latest developments in the attack on an Asian woman in Midtown. Everybody gripped by this video, right? Overnight, we learned there has been yeah. an arrest in that assault. Pretty quick work by the detectives here. Big question is how? How are they able to track him down so quickly? Well, they, the, with the community's help, uh, you know, the, the video, getting those pictures out, uh, getting information from the community, real quick work by the cops and detectives. And uh, my heart just goes out to uh, the Asian community and this victim in particular. It's a horrific, horrific attack by a parolee, by the way. And that brings me to the suspect, right? Brandon Elliott, convicted murderer who killed his mother when he was just 19 years old, 19 years ago, released. 17, after 17 years in prison, the question, Commissioner, should he have been out on parole? Well, that's a question more for the parole board, Dan. But what I would say is, you know, you, you, people people pay their debt to society. They got to be given second chances. But what I see from my seat is is a different perspective. When you're releasing people from prison and you're putting them in homeless shelters. You're asking for trouble. There's got to be a safety net and there's got to be resources for them. And, and, you know, this is one of unfortunately many, many, and, and maybe it draws attention to this issue, but releasing people and putting them in homeless shelters, I've been harping on this for years now. And, and I think, you know, you just shake your head and say, what could possibly go wrong? Mm -hmm. And this is what goes wrong. Um, it, it just never should happen. Well, when, he, when he was arrested outside of that of uh, that homeless hotel now, was there any indication that he was armed with a weapon? The New York Post is reporting that he potentially was carrying a knife in another incident from yesterday. Yeah, now I'm not going to get into the specifics, uh, Dan. Uh, you know, we'll look at now and see as we backtrack the detectives what, if anything else, that uh, this suspect may have done. Uh, I think the key for the public here is to put them a little right. bit at ease. You know, he is off the street. He's being charged with a hate crime. And, uh, you know, the Manhattan DA's office, I can assure you, will take this very seriously. It brings me to the question here about the security guard who witnessed the attack, turned his back on the victim, closed the door. He has been suspended. But the question became, did they do anything? Is there any indication on who actually called 911 here? You know, I do not have that information it's as okay. I sit here. Um, yeah. You know, so I, I'm not really sure in terms of who called. You know, very, very uh, significant injuries that the woman, um, you know, went through. She, she has a long recovery ahead of her. Again, uh, you know, the victims in this case is really where everyone should yeah. be focused and, uh, you know, hopefully a speedy recovery. You know, Commissioner, let's switch over to that incident on the J train. Also much talked about, right? The bystanders that took out their phone started filming this encounter between these two men, one guy pummeling, eventually choking the other. Where does that case stand right now? I understand the victim did not come forward to report. Yeah, we have not. We do not have a victim uh, reporting that crime. We have made a lot of headway in that crime. I can't get into the specifics. Um, we ask anyone with information to please come forward or that may know the identity of that uh, individual that was assaulted. I, I could tell you that uh, we know where it happened. We know when it happened. Happened uh, towards the end of last week on, the, on that train in Brooklyn. Uh, there's probably some facts about the case. Uh, if the preliminary information is accurate, that's going to take a little bit of a turn there, Dan, but we'll have more to say on that. What we need right now is anyone that may know of this victim to please call uh, Crime Stoppers. And there were a lot, there's a lot of conversation, Commissioner, like many other states, about what exactly to do. That, uh, do you have a duty to rescue law, which basically says that bystanders don't have to offer assistance in cases like this, right? A lot of people were saying people on that train should have stepped in to help. From the law enforcement perspective, what should a bystander do? I'm torn on this. I honestly am because I, I get how frustrated it is to see that and everyone says step in. And of course you want to step in if you can do it safely. But there's a real danger element to this too. So the, the one, number one thing that you have to do is um, call 911 and get the police there as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. If it's safe 
to step in and intervene in any way, of course you want to do that. You want to render aid to the person. Yeah. You know, make as much noise as possible to, to, to make this uh, terrible incident stopping. But, you know, and many times, Dan, it's a judgment call, and, and people are scared at the same time. Totally, and you're in that moment, and I can see how fear could take yep. over, right? Um, Commissioner, we talked about this last time you were here, but I think it begs the conversation to continue. The, at least 33 attacks on Asian Americans in New York this week. We were just talking about the arrest. NYPD's Asian Task Force, they've been busy deploying to different parts of the city, right, to prevent these attacks. I guess, how do you decide which neighborhood to target and how many members are on the task force? So, so we have multiple levels to this. Obviously, we have the Hate Crimes Task Force. We have specific dedicated detectives across the NYPD of Asian descent that are also pitching in. That's the Asian Hate Crimes Task Force piece to work with crime victims to get them, uh, you know, any resources they need, get them to help. Um, we also have a pretty significant deployment, as you said, in uniform. And we've recently started, uh, you know, plainclothes officers uh, that people are referring to as decoys out there in New mm -hmm. York City. Clearly, we're going to put them in predominantly Asian communities. Uh, that's step one. Uh, we're going to put them on the transit system. Yeah. We're also going to examine the reports that come in. The, the issue right now that we face is it is, it is somewhat spread out in, in New York City. Um, but we're going to go where the data tells us to and put them in the best chance that we have to, number one, keep people safe and to succeed in apprehending anyone. Yeah, I think what we saw the other day is it could it could happen anywhere. Hell's Kitchen, 43rd and 9th, right? I, I want to shift to the other big news here, and that is marijuana legalization. Governor Cuomo expected to sign this bill into law today. Curious to know how that will, if at all, change policing here in New York City. So, so we were asked about that yesterday, and now that we're starting to peel back, um, you know, we're waiting for the governor to sign it. Then, then we'll, we'll be putting orders out. We have some orders cut already. I mean, Dan, some, some real concerns here. And it's a lot of the issues that we've talked about for a couple of years. I mean, I, as a New Yorker and as a, a parent, I, I certainly worry about long-term effects and, and are we, what kind of messages. I, I get both sides of this mm -hmm. argument. Uh, the messages that we're sending to kids and, and um, you know, what do we know? You know, what, what have we learned from other states that have gone down this path? long-term health effects. Uh, I worry about the people driving, yeah. certainly. I don't think that that uh, is a recipe that's going to make the roads any safer. Um, so there's a, lot, there's a lot of issues with this. The growing inside, you know, you worry about. I know the fire department has raised some of these issues. And perhaps the biggest one, Dan, is, you know, well, number one, crime. I, we certainly worry about the crime impact. But we worry about what it means for New Yorkers. And, um, you know, us looking at this bill, um, I hope I'm missing something, but it appears that it's, it's legalizing the smoking of marijuana outside. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's not something that most other states did. They, they legalized marijuana, but it was still illegal to smoke outside in public. And, and if that's made legal here in New York City, I, I don't know what we're telling New Yorkers when, when they call up and say there's people smoking in front of my house or my apartment building, or I take my kids to the parade, whether it's on Eastern Parkway or on Fifth Avenue, and there's people smoking marijuana next to me as I'm trying to enjoy the parade. Um, I, I'll tell you, we get tens and tens and tens of thousands of calls from New Yorkers as it is about people smoking marijuana, yeah. uh, hanging out, the, 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 um, you know, the quality of life. And that brings me and to the like answer the answer is like the, the answer is now it's not going to be a police matter. And that's that's troubling. And, that, and that's what I was going to ask, because it has been for so long, right? And is there a mind shift, not only with the public, but within the department then, on how to police that? Well, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, it's simply not going to be, you know, against the law. So it's, it's a significant shift. And I, I just, uh, listen, you, you, you make, you pass new laws, you always, I think, worry about what's the unintended consequences. We've certainly seen that sometimes before. This is one that's, that's a significant shift. Uh, I have no doubt they think uh, that they're doing the right thing. Uh, I just, these are some of the things that I worry about and I think that New Yorkers are worried about. Yeah, briefly, we're almost out of time here. You've talked about reforms and how some of them are actually putting dangerous people back on the street, right? This is something, there seems to be a shift here. Is there a middle ground, like the marijuana legalization, is it a middle ground here for you? There's always a middle ground, right? And that's the trick, I think. I think, again, as I said, when you look at other states yeah. that have legalized marijuana and found a way to do it, and even there you have unintended consequences, um, 
but smoking outside is is uh, not legal. Got it. I mean, it, it's gotten to the point, Dan, where smoking a cigarette is is more frowned upon, uh, if you think, than what this might turn into. Mm -hmm. And and you know, parents, kids, it, it's just uh, it's 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 a tough one for sure. Um, but I, I think you gotta you gotta try to find middle ground. And, and lastly, Yankees home opener is tomorrow. Any plans to increase security outside of Yankee Stadium? A sign that New York is coming back to live baseball. I had trouble hearing you. Did you say the Met home uh, <laughs> opener is tomorrow? <laughs> I said the Yankees. The Mets are playing. They're just away, sir. I guess I know who you're rooting for. Yeah, uh, Chief Kenny Lear up in the Bronx. You know uh, the the team up there has this down to a science. It, it should be, uh, you know, it should be a good day for Yankee fans. Uh, we wish them all the luck in the world unless they play the Mets. And, uh, you know, with the reduced attendance, too, it should be a good day. There you go. So I guess you're a Mets fan, right? No bias there. <laughs> Commissioner Shea, always appreciate you coming on for these conversations. We'll see you next time, okay?